Administration Update, Dr. Casey. Good evening, members of the board and the public that's behind me, as well as those that may be viewing. I have about seven items actually tonight to go through with you as part of my comments, but most of them are going to be led in the first person by people I introduce. So first is our election preparedness update. So if uh, Registrar Ms. Vera could come down and give a little preview of what is going on in, in the course of the election that is upon us. Ms. Good Vera. evening. Thank you, Dr. Casey. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you for your time this evening, evening and allowing me to provide a brief election update. So as you know, in-person early voting is right upon us. So the dates are the registrar's office is open September 23rd, that's Friday through November 4th. Um, we are open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and we will be open the two Saturdays before the election, so Saturday, October 29, and November 5th from 8.30 to 5 p.m. Our satellite locations, um, those were open October 24th through November 4th. They opened two weeks prior to the election. They will be open 10 a.m., to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Again, the two Saturdays before the election, same time as the registrar's office, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Our satellite locations are located in five libraries across the county. Clover Hill Library, Meadowdale Library, Ettrick Matoica Library, North Courthouse Road Library, and La Prade Library. So absentee vote by mail, just to give you some numbers that we will be sending out. We have 183 ballots, and that's just a request for one election. So we have 183 requests to receive a ballot just specifically for the November 2022 election. Total permanent absentee ballots, 13,402. And those are for people who have filled out to request ballots um, for every election that they are qualified to vote in. So we are looking at mailing out a total number of ballots, 13,585. And we um, plan to have those mailed um, no later than September 21st. And then we have some email ballots going out, and that'll be 90 email ballots. So we have some deadlines. The deadline to register to vote or to update your current registration is October 17th, and that is 5 p.m. if you're going to come into the registrar's office, 11.59 if you're going to do anything online to update or to register to vote. The deadline to apply for a ballot to be mailed to you, um, it is October 28. It must be received by 5 p.m. in the registrar's office. The deadline to return a vote by mail ballot is November 14. The ballot must be postmarked on or before election day and received 12 p.m. in the registrar's office on that day. And it is November 14 because Friday, it's usually the Friday after the election, um, but it is Veterans Day. So that will postpone it till November 14 for that deadline, which means our provisional um, ballot meeting will also be held on that Monday, uh, the 14th. So we've done, been doing some officer of election recruitment. And of course, we are always looking for officers of election, not just during election time, but we are consistently searching for people to help us conduct the elections. Our projected need for this election is 1,100. We've had 800 confirm that they will work the election. 500 are pending. So we sent out an availability survey last week to 1,300 active poll workers. So 800 of that 1,300 have responded yes. 500 we are waiting on confirmation. 40 have just declined for whatever reason they're not available. Um, the Electoral Board also um, approved an increase in the stipend for Election Day, and I spoke with Mr. Larry Hagee, and Mr. Larry Hagee, former registrar, said officers of election had not received an increase in their stipend since 2008. So it's been a while. So chief officers will now receive $260 for Election Day, deputy chief officers $225, 
officers of election will receive $200, and we have increased the in-person training to $25. Um, I'm excited to um, work with Electure to provide us online training. So the county approved funding for us to work with Electure to provide online training for our election workers. This online training platform uses the most innovative online learning techniques, including video production, virtual reality simulation, game theory, and interactive exercises. Our ability to utilize online training will help to ensure consistency and accuracy in the information the election officers receive um, and that they are required to know for the successful conduct of the election. Plus, as we all know, online training is convenient. Poll workers have more flexibility to choose when and where they take their training. The goal is to have online training ready by early October. Um, at this time, we will continue to offer a few in-person classes. So as you are well aware, redistricting took place. Um, so now we have 87 precincts as opposed to 81. Three polling places were merged. Nine polling places were added. Precinct 402 Genito at Providence Elementary School is split by congressional district. And this is just a summed up overview of precinct changes. Precinct 412 Clover Hill at Clover Hill High School is split also by congressional district. If you vote at Clover Hill Elementary, the updated precinct name is New Tomahawk. It is now part of the Clover Hill Magisterial District. If you vote at Creekwood Recreation Center, the updated precinct name is New Manchester, and it is now part of the Dale Magisterial District. Precinct 408 Reams will return to Reams Road Elementary School. They were at North Courthouse Road but North Courthouse Road now will also be a precinct. Um, precinct 502 Crestwood will also return to Crestwood Elementary School. So I encourage everyone to visit the registrar's website. I've put that here on ours, reg, um, registrar at chesterfield.gov. That's our email address if you have any questions, but please visit our website to view updated maps and a list of the updated precincts. And always the big question is, will voter notices be sent out to our um, community? Yes. So the state has agreed to incur that cost, and they will be sending voter notices to everyone, whether they were affected by the redistricting or not. So 265,000 voter notices will be going out to all registered voters to inform them of their new precincts and their district information. Just, um, just so you are aware, as I was appointed, my seat was vacant. So I just wanted to let you all know that um, starting September 6th, we will have on our staff a new deputy registrar, a new absentee manager, and an absentee coordinator. So we are very excited um, about that. They will bring new perspective, I'm sure, to our office. So we're very excited. Um, and this concludes the election update. I will end with a thank you to the multitude of departments in the county that assist us in conducting fair and accurate elections. Um, I do apologize if I missed anyone on this list, um, but we certainly could not conduct elections without um, this assistance. Each department plays a vital role in ensuring the integrity of the process and that Chesterville County continues to be the first choice community. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Vera. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I just want to acknowledge your representative partners who helped on election day, because that's always a good question when you have additional hands to assist throughout the election day, yes. as it can be quite interesting. But thank you, excellent update. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Engel. Um, for those that may not know, how does that email ballot work? So the email ballot goes out to our military so they're overseas, so they can um, request an email ballot. And that will be returned to our office. It is a hand-counted ballot because it can't go through a machine. So we do hand-count those election day. Okay, thank you. I just sure. honestly hadn't seen that before, and I'm sure it's been there, and I missed it, but I was interested in what that meant. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vera. Thank you.